The king would be horrified to find the hostess of the royal banquet dressed like a scullery maid. A princess must be attired like royalty. Do I have to wear this all the time? Oh, of course not, Your Highness. You'll need something much more formal for dinner. Couldn't I just wear one of my own dresses? Oh, how very amusing, Your Highness. But it simply isn't done. It's such a beautiful day. Why don't we open the curtains? No, no, no! These curtains are never opened. And certainly not by a princess. It most definitely isn't done. Dukes and Viscounts sit nearest the king unless there is a marquee present. Wouldn't it be nice if people could just sit wherever they like? No. You must never seat a duke above a marquee or below a baron. Which color is correct, Your Highness? Cream or ecru? Um, ecru? Goodness, no. Cream. But there isn't any difference. Oh, my. So much to learn. So little time. And the banquet. As always, the royal menu shall consist of the rarest roast beef, French onion soup, darigan mashed potatoes, freshly baked baguettes, the finest truffles in the kingdom, and for dessert, Norwegian stewed prunes. Prunes? For dessert? The king expects it. It is a tradition that is never broken. Besides, I like them. Warning. This show is intended for a mature audience only and may contain harsh language, sexual references, and derogatory terms. Listener discretion is advised. Hello everybody, this is Terrible Tuesday Movie Night, watching bad movies so you don't have to. This is Season 2, Episode 5. God, we're on Episode 5 already. I am your Master of Ceremonies, Dale Campbell. Thank you so much everyone for joining us on this adventure. It is good to be back into the cinema once again, watching these bad movies so you don't have to. We've got a lot more planned for you, but this week we have the Beloved, I think. I think it's Beloved. I, I don't actually know. I, f I forgot that um, Disney did a um, Tweakle? Tweakle. No. What's it called? Not a Tweakle. That's not a word. Oh, not series. Trilogy. <laughs> Trequel. They did a trilogy of animated movies for Cinderella. And it got suggested to me to do Cinderella 2, Dreams Come True. And of course, it's time for our signature very visual trailer on an audio podcast. And let's hear it now. We'll be right back. It was the moment that changed her life forever. Taking her to a place she'd never been. To a life she dared only dream about. Discover what comes after Happily Ever After as Walt Disney's most enchanting fairy tale continues. Cinderella 2, Dreams Come True. The life of an ordinary girl becomes extraordinary in an all-new full-length adventure. I have to try this my way. Featuring your favorite characters from one of Disney's greatest treasures, Cinderella. Maybe it's time to start following your heart. Now this is more like it. And a new rendition of the Oscar-nominated classic Bibbidi Bobbidi Boo, together with three brand new songs. The magic lives on. Someday I'll get this princess thing right. I think that day is today. Cinderella 2, Dreams Come True. 
premiering only on Disney DVD and video, February 26th. That's right. We are watching Cinderella 2 Dreams Come True. Now, on the cover of the DVD, it says that this is a full-length feature film, which it is, but I was a little bit surprised when it was... Like, the movie is broken up into segments, and we'll get more about this in the rant and review section, but when they told me that it was a feature-length film, I thought it would be a complete story. <laughs> not not, um, not a series of mini uh, Cinderella the Film Festival, <laughs> if that makes sense. And, um, you know, it's just... I think that... I don't know if I like this better than as a sort of mini Cinderella film festival or as a whole story. I don't know. Each part felt like it's a own sort of independent segment and it didn't really flow that well. So first impressions of the movie itself. I thought it was a full length complete story, but then... I, that's not what we got, but we'll get to that in a little bit. Some opening credits for you. It was released in the United Kingdom for Disney's home video on DVD. Oh, God, remember that? I rented it on YouTube, so I didn't get the DVD experience. It came out February 26, 2001, directed by John Keffer. Keffer? Sure. Main actors and actresses, we had Jennifer, Ka Jennifer Hale as Cinderella, excuse me, Rob Paulson as Jack the Baker, Sir Hugh, Grand Duke, Bert, and Flower Vendor. <laughs> <laughs> Flower Vendor. Corey Burton as Gus Mert and Stable Hand. <laughs> These are very notable characters, you guys. Uh, Andre so Cotta as the king, and Rusty Taylor as the fairy godmother, Mary Mouse, Beatrice, Daphne, Drazilla, Courtness, Legrand. <laughs> sure. <laughs> uh, the, uh, the movie synopsis uh, is the, pl uh, the plot of this movie, <laughs> if there is one to follow. Well, there is kind of, like I mentioned, there's, it's a Cinderella film festival. So the movie explores Cinderella's happily ever after life as a princess in three stories with the health of fairy godmother. First, Cinderella's awkward first days at the palace when she tries so hard to forget to be herself. It's been so hard that she forgets to be herself. Second, how ja Jack felt left out so he wished to be a human. And third of all, and my personal favourite, how Cinderella taught one of her nasty step-seasons to smile that leads her to true love. This has film festival vibes written all over it, right? Like, I can't, I can't emphasise that enough. And we'll get into that right now, actually, because this is the rant and review part where we really just tear this movie apart. And I've got some notes. Actually, I have taken, I have taken some notes. I've only got one page, so don't, don't get too excited. I uh, forgot to mention we're back. Um, we're finally back at the castle. Uh, we're back. Uh, it's good to be back uh, doing this show, uh, doing this episode for all of you as well. It's an absolute pleasure that we're back. Uh, did we mention, uh, we'll mention in the very next scene that we're back um, and it's good to be back. This movie repeats a lot of lines, and I don't understand why. And it repeats lines in the one segment. So it's not like it's continuous all throughout the movie as well. It's like even the opening two minutes, they say they're back like no less than 10 times. <laughs> They're back from their honeymoon. Oh, they're back from the shop. Oh, they're back from doing this. They're back from that. It, uh, movies that say what they're doing is kind of a bit pointless to me. I don't understand why they do that. You know what I mean? It kind of defeats the purpose of having something on screen. Then you're just listening to a radio show. Uh, you know what I mean? So I don't... And it, if... They repeated lines 
over this different segments, then that's fine because then you're trying to tie them all in. By the way, they're the only, they, they do try and tie these three segments together with the whole premise of making a book for Cinderella to read to them later on, which, by the way, I don't know how, I guess that kind of works. I, I'm trying to think about it, and this is fresh in my mind because I've watched it. I've watching these right before we record the episode, but particularly this one, I watched it like 10 minutes before hitting record on this, on this episode, which is for better or for worse, as these are raw emotions that are kind of just unfiltered. But anyway... I I think the the continuity of them writing a book for then Cinderella to read back to them I guess that kind of ties into the fairy tale thing but I I just I don't I don't know how that works because Cinderella isn't involved in any of those scenes this is all driven by the mice and the fairy godmother whereas uh, yeah, Cinderella appears in all three of the mini film festivals, but I don't understand how that ties in, I guess. I don't know. They're making it for her, and she's in all three of them. I, you know what? I, I think they could have executed that a little bit better. You know what I mean? So, I mean, they could have made this movie with one whole storyline but then we wouldn't have had the intermittent scenes which i think made up for about a third of the movie anyway so there you go uh other things to consider uh repeating lines also i um the the steamed prunes thing got mentioned in all of the scenes as well at least at least the first two i don't know i think i mentioned in the last one but Jack, actually, no, it was. It was mentioned in each of the intermittent scenes as well. That's where that's where it was. It wasn't mentioned. It was mentioned in the first one with the festival. There's so many parties also to try and keep track of. The first one was the grand return of the princess, which everyone said a movie like that. <laughs> the princess. <laughs> Emphasis on the wrong syllable there. The the spring festival. And the other one was the Grand Ball, which I don't understand the difference, but anyway, between the first one and the third one, but that's neither here nor there. It's like a quarterly meeting, I guess. I don't understand the steam prunes. Uh, why, why do the mice hate them so much? How do mice know what steamed prunes taste like? But anyway, chocolate pudding was a way better alternative for, <laughs> for steamed prunes. Steamed prunes? Yes, steamed prunes. Like the steam hams meme. <laughs> steamed prunes. Hmm, these taste like hamburgers. Anyway, I love that meme so much. Uh, repeat, uh, yeah, I don't understand why mice hate steamed prunes. They don't know what they taste like, but anyway, uh, it simply, it simply isn't done. Yeah, this, this movie had some really lackluster lines in it, if I do say so myself, because half the line, well, half, but a quarter of the lines were repeated, because even in that first act, there was two lines. There was like, this is not how it's done. It simply isn't done like that. One does not plan a banquet like this. You know, and it just it just could use with some with some oomph, you know what I mean? Some very oomph. Um how does I did I did ask myself, uh, how does one plan a banquet? You know, it is very hard to plan a banquet. Trust me, I have done family Christmas one year at my old house, and it's hard work. I feel f I felt for Cinderella when she was like, "I don't know what I'm doing." <laughs> the, the, the fuck do you mean? There's a difference between oh birds. The birds are very active this morning. I don't know if you can hear them on the recording because I'm using my new setup. But here you go. I am. Um, I fell for Cinderella. I was like, I don't know the fuck the difference between cream and acorn is. Is acorn even a color? I fell for her. Hey, I was like, oh, what do you mean prunes for dessert? <laughs> Back to the prunes. 
<laughs> the fucking prunes. Prunes are not that bad. I'm here for prunes. I am a prune stan. They are delicious, I will say. And I do have some tips, though, some banquet planning tips for Cinderella if um, she's interested. One, you have to make sure that uh, you sit everyone comfortably at the table. People indeed cannot sit where they want at a fancy request, like a fancy dinner. No, that, that, that I agree is simply not done because what if you sit uncle Steve next to auntie Peter, P E T A. See, Peter is a both a, a, a girl and a male name. Anyway, what if you sit them side by side and they have a history of not wanting to do something together? <laughs> I don't know what that is. <laughs> this is going downhill very fast. But anyway, um, you know what I mean? So you can't sit them next to each other. You have to sit them diagonally to each other. So there's a buffer on either side. See, you know, I like the approach of where Cinderella was going that she wanted to do things her way. But... Yeah, the seeding thing I kind of with with on that one. Another tip for planning a banquet, uh, what you do do is you do open the gates uh, for people to come in. That typically is how that works, even though... No, you don't open the gates until... Oh, this accent's getting bad. You don't open the gates until it is time for the banquet to begin. The accent's so bad. What was her... What's her name? Oh, I can't think of what her... What her name is. It's not Stephen Banksley. Anastasia, no. What what was her name? The Prince. By the way, is Cinderella's is Cinderella's Prince Prince Charming or is it just Just the Prince? It could be any of these additional voices. That that's the thing. A lot of these people don't have credits. They have everyone else I just read uh, has a uh, Holly Taylor? Sure. Why not? Uh, you know, she she was like, oh, you know, you do this and then you do that. I did feel full for Cinderella too because she did have, she did collapse a little bit. And then after that, she kind of was like, ah, screw you all. I'm, I'm doing this my own way. So I did like that. A couple of things also for planning a banquet. Uh, you've got to make sure that you have enough budget. I uh, didn't, don't know what the budget for this film is, but it, I wouldn't imagine it'd be very high. Uh, you don't want to spend all of your money on food. You've got to make sure that you have enough for beverages and stuff like that as well. So you've got to cater for everyone's needs. Um, okay, now I'm just now I'm just going through Christmas planning, <laughs> which is coming up in a time and in around when this episode may be released. I don't know. I'm this is this is a seasoned show, so we don't know when Christmas really is. So I had to take a drink of Coca Cola, not sponsored. Please sponsor. Uh, onto my, more onto my notes. I, I like taking notes. I, I've taken a page worth of notes. Uh, swipe effects. 2001 called and wants its, uh, Windows Movie Maker back. Boy, some of the transitions were distracting. Holy. I mean, they were so inconsistent too, because they were like, oh, you know, it's, uh, we're just going to go, all right, we're cutting the scene and we're going to swipe. And we're on to the next scene. And swipe. We're on to the next scene. And then, oh, no, they're going to crash into flowers. And, oh, whoops, we're on to the next scene now. It was a bit jarring to watch that. Uh, some good things about the movie that I did enjoy, actually, because we have been quite negative on this movie. This movie was cute. I do like the story of Cinderella, and I do like the fact that it was a collection of short stories, even though none of them really made sense uh, to connect to each other. The sequel was... The trilogy itself was very unnecessary. Uh, we've got Cinderella 3, a twist in time planned for next season if we do get renewed, but I think that's it's shortlisted. It's not guaranteed shortlisted onto the next season uh, next season if we get renewed i i did like the collection of short stories although i wanted it to be marketed that way the there were cute moments 
I will say that the third segment was my favorite. I think I I had more of a volitional reaction to the actual love story because that is the true ens- essence of Cinderella. You know what I mean? Like that is what Cinderella is about is about two people falling in love and having a fairy tale moment. The baker and the stepson, the step, the baker and the stepsister. I don't know what that was, by the way. Um, and you know, it's it's about that is the Cinderella essence. The Spring Festival where Cinderella was uh, playing a general contractor. I don't. It's not very Cinderella like. Sure, Jack turning into a human and trying to help Cinderella along the way. Sure, that was kind of akin to what it's all about but in the first one where they're planning the uh, grand dinner sure that's uh, that what i found good because it happened back to oh pardon me i just banged my desk i it happened back to what the first movie was was her becoming a princess and now she has to find her way i, I guess that ties in but the the essence of finding true love and then Coming to terms with it, I just... Something about that just didn't... You know... I don't know. Uh, something about that just didn't connect with me. But the last one did. So I'm glad they ended on that. And sure, the whole sequence... The whole bibbidi boo sequence to get the book to Cinderella was great. Even though when Cinderella opened the book, the page was blank. So that was a good little goof. Um, there was another goof that I had written down here as well actually it's on the imdb page as well that i did notice the fact that um during the first segment with the pudding that's right it was the pudding that all of a sudden the king had pudding and then they cut away and then all of a sudden oh yeah surprise there's no pudding on the king anymore (laughs) even though there's uh the bowl on the head was removed yeah surprise no pudding (laughs) That was a bit of an in- incognito. Uh, the other first segment thing that I did like was um, when she's crying in her bedroom in segment one was uh, a wish a dream heart makes uh, from the original. So that I kind of I kind of did sort of enjoy that. Uh, mind you, I will say that this is in the uh, Cinderella 2 Dreams Come True was in the Disney home video era. Now, I think, have I reviewed, when did Tarzan 2 come out? Because I remember reviewing Tarzan 2. Was this during this era as well? Because I had the problem with Tarzan 2 where they were, they were trying to yeah, Tarzan 2, The Legend Begins, it was in 2005. This was also during home video home video era of... Uh, home video era of um, Disney. God, I couldn't think of that. God. But, you know, it, that was during that era where they were trying to force a sequel from where it doesn't belong. I... I don't... I, I want to say that this actually did come out in cinemas. Yeah. Anyway, Tarzan 2, and then there was another one that I reviewed that was a similar to... I can't think of what it was. Uh, it was a Disney Direct to video thing. Bear with me while I find it, because I do have a point here. The Legend of Hercules? No... Hercules Save Christmas. Yeah, that's it. No, I'm just kidding. Or was it George of the Jungle 2? That's what it was, but that's not Disney, is it? Hang on, is that Disney? George of the Jungle. George of the Jungle 2. I wish I wish I had a I wish I had a producer because no, George of the Jungle 2. Ah, uh, yes, George of the Jungle 2 may not have been... It was Disney. That's what it was. Oh, my God, that movie was awful. But similar era of the Disney renaissance of trying to bring back that movie of that, that the old tales 
into a new light while there was not really much else going on in Disney's time. Uh, so, like, name another Disney movie that came out in 2000 and 2001. Disney movies that come out in 2001. There was Recess Schools Out. Uh, Atlantis The Lost Empire came out. Monsters, Inc. came out on November 2. That's right. Uh, that was the that was really the only movie that came out in two thousand and one that was anything of of note was of Monsters Inc. Recess the schools out. I need to we need to watch that. That's that's definitely definitely a movie that we need to watch. It was not critically received, but the home video part of it. Definitely. I forgot Monsters Inc. came out in 2001. I thought that was much later. Oof, I'm getting old. There was... Um, I did like, and I forgot all about it. I feel like I've watched this movie before, but not on the show. I hope. <laughs> I hope this is... I hope this is not... This has not been repeated. Ooh, some just beeped. Huh. Anyway. Uh... I feel like I've watched this movie before. I don't I don't know where and I don't know how. Maybe I watched it for for myself. Definitely haven't reviewed it on the show. Hunchback of Notre Dame 2 was another was another Disney vi home video thing. Anyway, no, I haven't watched this movie for the show, but I have, I feel like I've seen this movie, but I feel like that it could have been one of those, this sounds very familiar from somewhere movies. <laughs> it could be like that. This episode's turning into longer than the actual movie itself. Did like old fashioned Twitter. That's definitely something that we need to strive for again is old fashioned Twitter where <laughs> I think I like you. Oh, I think I like you too. And then the little birds, Cinderella's birds. I don't know what their names are, but Cinderella's birds, they go to the other person. Oh, you needed the yoink. Let me take your, your hat or hoodie thing. I don't know what it is. And then let me take it to this other person who you like. Definitely old fashioned Twitter. This was pre Twitter. Do you believe? Anyway, uh, a couple of lines, couple, a couple of funny lines, um, particularly from the third section. The third section was definitely my favourite. The middle one was kind of eh, uh, but the first one, first one was reminiscent of Cinderella's continuation story. The second one didn't need to exist, and the third one really did, it wasn't a continuation of Cinderella's story at all. But I did like uh, a couple of lines from that last sec segment though before we round up. <laughs> He's got that look in his eyes. <laughs> what is he seasick? <laughs> it's someone who uh, formerly uh, worked on cruise ships. I appreciate that line, and that's just a funny line in general. Um, and when Cinderella was talking to Anastasia, he's terrific, and he cooks too. <laughs> that I just found funny because I have a partner who cooks also. So definitely, definitely funny t to me. <laughs> So, there you go. That is your rant and review of... I was going to say, of Terrible Tuesday Movie Night, of Cinderella 2. Dreams do come true. Let's round this thing up with our score. Uh, I'm going to give it a 4. I think it deserves a solid 4. I think if it wasn't for that middle segment, and if we flushed out that first segment a little bit more... Where Cinderella was finding herself, I think it could have been good. That last segment is kind of an offshoot and didn't really need to be there. As as my as it, it was my favorite to watch because it was enjoyable and definitely had some moments, but I could have I could have done without it if that makes sense. So there you go. Uh, I'm gonna give it a four. It deserves a four, solid four, and we're gonna go from there. All right. Thank you, everyone, for listening to this episode of Terrible Tuesday Movie Night. I hope you are enjoying this. Uh, we are taking emails at Campbell D Productions, C-A-M-P-B-E-L-L-D Productions, P Campbell D Productions, C-A-M-P-B-E-L-L-D-P-R-O-D-U-C-T-I-O-N-S. I always struggle with that. 
at gmail.com. You can support this and everything that I do over on my Patreon at patreon.com slash Dale Campbell, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash Dale Campbell, D-A-L-E-C-A-M-P-B-E-L-L. You can follow my many Instagram adventures over on my Instagram at, Insta- at the Dale Campbell. That's T-H-E-D-A-L-E-C-A-M-P-B-E-L-L. You can join the Discord while you can talk to other fans of uh, Cinderella 2, a uh, tale, a uh, dreams come true. I was about to say, tales of Cinderella. <laughs> there you go. That could have been it. It could have been something generic like that. It could have been like Tales from the Castle or Cinderella 2, the mini film festival. Um, I will say this did, and I also think this was a mini film festival because they didn't really have anything to do with each other apart from the intimate scenes, which... Yeah, I would have preferred a mini film festival. It was felt like the Pixar film festival at Epcot where you sit down and you watch the three movies and they, you, you're you in and you're out. These did run a little long. I mean, it, the movie itself was an hour and 17 minutes. So, yeah, it is what it is. But definitely film festival worthy-ish. No, great. But didn't pa- I'm not passing it by any stretch of the imagination. So, um, yeah. Watch it if you're a fan of Cinderella. If you're curious, I'd watch it. But don't watch it because there are better things to watch. <laughs> um, you can join the Discord at bit.ly slash Dale Discord. D-A-L-E-D-I-S-C-O-R-D. And you can support me by um, walking some merch. Bit.ly slash G-L-S merch. That's G-L-S-M-E-R-C-H. Next time on Terrible Tuesday Movie Night, we've got Did You Hear About the Morgans? That's right. Did you hear about the Morgans? I may or may not have a special guest for that episode to be confirmed. But until then, I've been Dale Campbell coming at you with another episode of Terrible Tuesday Movie Night, Season 2, Episode 5 in the bag. Tune in next week, Season 2, Episode 6. Did you hear about the Morgans? Until then. We'll see you then. We'll, until then, we'll see you then. <laughs> we'll see you all next time. Thanks for listening. Bye for now. Bye!